we've been discussing kind of changes in WordPress and oh. web development. <laughs> you are uh, very good. You are very good people. Um, I apologize sincerely. I, I started to get a bit like worried and a bit cross for wasting everybody's time. And then I started to drink beer and I suddenly <laughs> became, and it, it, it went away. All of that pain went away. And I suddenly thought, ah, oh, there's nothing I can do. So, um, <laughs> So thank you. There's this lady in support, tech support. Right, okay, so this is cool, right? The, the platform let us down on a technical glitch, but the, the lady at Big Marker um, was on, like on chat straight away, fixing it up. So that's pretty cool. I quite like yeah. that. So uh, an error happened, and here we are. So David and, and uh, um, Jim, it's, it's over to you. Would you please finish the, uh, the webinar, and we'll, me, we'll, me and David will just... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, we were just saying that we enjoyed uh, the fact that you created your podcast and and it enabled us to meet people we otherwise wouldn't have met. And we really enjoyed the listening to you to talk and the guests you've had on. And mm. then then you came back. And uh, so we know you'd probably want to get going with the talking about the giveaways and all of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, I guess we're a bit a, a bit shorter of time than we would have been. But the idea was we were going to three things, really. Number one, we were going to just sort of pontificate about the last couple of years. David and I have been doing this podcast. It, it was, whose idea was it, David? Was it yours or mine? It was yours. Yeah. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was keen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've been doing it ever since. And I, I think we've missed one at Christmas once i think i even did one at christmas once and put it out um and, and i'm really pleased with the way it's going i mean wordpress is just such a cool thing um i'm so so happy that we started doing it. it's opened so many little crazy little doors uh for me mostly meeting people like david and you two you know um this is the first time i've ever been face to face with david mccann but the reason that we asked you guys on we actually did ask three people we asked david mccann who's made it we've asked jim galliano who's made it and we also asked vaughn simons who said he would make it but something else has maybe got in the way um and then we also asked paul lacy but he's on holiday and he said he would come on and i refused kind of said you, you no, no you're not <laughs> no you're supposed to be sitting by a pool uh he's in portugal or something like that nice. so I think we were going to talk a little bit about the podcast, but let's should we just curtail that, David, and get on with the um, get on with giving out prizes? Yeah, I think so. Okay, right. So here's the thing, right? We had let me let me see if I can share my screen, and it'll go a bit recursive for a moment. Uh, let me see if I can find wpbuilds.com forward slash one hundred close all this nonsense down so 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 we had this competition which quite a lot of you entered it's all closed off now and here's all the stuff you could win from all these people i was very what i did was i basically emailed all the people who've been on the podcast who can you see my screen by the way yeah no you can't but can anybody I see can. my screen you can, uh, can. okay great um and just uh, few lines three or four lines saying can you you know we've got this episode 100 coming up do you want to give us a prize uh, to give out and and the, uh, loads of them said yes and then you know the competition ended last night at, at um, midnight i had quite a busy day yesterday and so when it had finished closed it all off and then david and i have spent a few hours this morning randomly assigning prizes and i went to a website called random.org which generates um, proper entropy. It doesn't use like pseudo random numbers based upon some sort of algorithm. It uses proper entropy like environmental signals and cloud data and stuff like that. It's really amazing. Um, and, and we've got the prizes. And I've got a link for you guys. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because that what I need to do is get you the, the link now. Have, has my screen gone? Yes, great. Here we are. Uh, here it is. You guys, if you're inter if you're here to look at the prizes, this is everybody. Now, I really hope we're not going to come up against some sort of GDPR nonsense because that's got everybody's names on it. Um, if you if you if you entered this competition, you you'll be on there somewhere if you won something. Now, some of you have won a boatload of stuff because you're jammy. 
um, <laughs> or you probably saved the link. Um, all I can say is if you, so what we've done is we've expunged uh, any, any per, I mean, there's personally identifiable information in that your name and surname is in there because I couldn't see. There was loads of Davids and loads of Martins and things like that. Um, and that's who's won it stuff, basically. So I don't know if you can sort that list yourselves. Um, yeah. But you can nice. see, can you, can, is it possible to sort that list for yourselves? But for example, you can see that right at the top there, and it's through no reason than like we were just fiddling with it. Um, <laughs> this, this chap at the top, Bernard, has won a boatload um, because he shared it a boatload and he got loads of entries. And then Ky Kyle, I don't know if Kyle stuck around after this abomination. Kyle, you won a boatload <laughs> as well. Um, Kyle's like number two on that list, but for no reason other than that's the way it fell out of the uh, the, work, the platform that, that did it. So what I would say is go and find, go and try and find your name on there somewhere. Now, uh, yeah, are you on there, Jim? Did you enter? No, no. Somebody blackballed me from the competition. Mm. <laughs> Was that me? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't want yeah, to. I, I, I don't need to win my own prize. <laughs> <laughs> um so what, the, what we're going to do is in each case in every single case now i'll tell you what it will be a strange day if i ever do this again because i, I had no idea this competition was going to take me so long um and there's probably a system of doing it cleverly but basically i've done this manually um i created all the little thumbnails for it and and i've now got to write bespoke emails to everybody uh that's one oh. so i've got i know over the next couple of days i've got to write a hundred and how many how many people have won what does that spreadsheet say 40 something wasn't it 173 oh 73 wow ah i've got to write 173 emails because each person has, there's a different thing. There's a different way of redeeming your prize. So let's say, for example, that you won, I don't know, client portal or something. Um, the plugin owner might have said, give me their email address. So I've got to provide your email address to them. Or they might have said, here's a coupon code. So I'm going to have to email you with a coupon code. So what I would say is, if your name's on that list, uh, you know, it's going to be 2027 or something along those lines before you get your hands on it. Very likely the plugin <laughs> will have gone out of existence. <laughs> Cause, cause now that it's over, I've, I've got better things to do. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like there are not that many people in the chat. I don't know how many people we have online. 11. How many people are here? But maybe 11. you could read out, maybe you could read out the winners of the people who are here in case they don't have a link yeah. to this sheet. Okay, so first of all, if you are in this, and there's a lot of Google spreadsheet shows you that there's people on. So there's about 12 people looking at, there's eight people looking at that spreadsheet at the moment. Um, so the, the URL is links.wpbuilds.com forward slash prizes. Um, and you can go and check that out. It's, it's in no way organized. So it was just in the order that your names fell out the system. So you will literally have to go through that that and look for your first and surname unless there is a way of sorting that data but I, I don't know that you can do that because I've set it up to view only there's no no permission for you to um, you can you can go to the data uh, menu and sort by first name yeah I don't know if you can do it if you've only got viewing privileges yeah it just you can. Holds it as a temporary it doesn't change the sheet for anybody else it just oh great right we'll do that then do what David said Go and organize, you know, click on the top, the A column, and use the data tab um, and sort it A to Z or whatever's most convenient for you and see if you've won anything. I hope you have. Um, but a quick word, a quick shout out to, you know, some of the people who made this possible. We had Mike Killen, Facet WP, uh, Eric Ham over at Cobalt Apps, uh, David from Page Builder Framework, Troy Dean. Um, the guys over at Brainstorm Force gave us a boatload of stuff, including Convert Pro, uh, Dimitri at Breezy, Elliot at ACF, um, Peacher has given away a design course, there's Sebastian at Microthema, 
Uh, Puneet, again, a boatload of stuff, um, including this one, Divi Monk, and this um, power pack for Beaver Builder and Elemental. Um, Laura at Client Portal. Content Snare from James Rose. Baptiste from W Office. Astra, again, that's Brainstorm Force. Arindo at WP Ultimo. Uh, Zach Gordon. Uh, Kanban WP, that was Corey Mass. Erin Flynn gave us a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. At the last minute, we got WP Security Audit Log and w w SWTE plugins, the Swift Performance plugin. They, they jumped on board right at the very end. Beaver Builder, those guys gave us two licenses for their pro uh, license. Ultimate Dashboard, again, that's David Von Gries. Uh, WP Compress, that's James Cantoni. Um, Project Hoddle, Andre. Turnkey websites, uh, more, more stuff, more stuff, more. I'm, basically, I'm just going through and finding. Oh, yeah, Rebecca Gill gave us her entire suite of SEO courses. Um, Spark Chart, Joe Casabona with his creator courses. Um, missing Letter from Ben. Um, da -da 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 -da. Smart Slider. Um, and <laughs> it's uh, Jim. This is priceless. Uh, it's done on a random function. The uh, the sorting of the 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 display of the uh, the prizes, and your name is at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you only gave one of mine away and not a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> well, er I think Erin. I think Erin is so lovely for doing that. But honestly, it's it's fun. So go and check it out, and please be somewhat. Somewhat patient. Um, I have, I have no way other than a manual way. Do you know what though? Anybody in here who's a developer, this this exact scenario is ripe for a plugin. Not oh. only, basically, you know, if you can if you can organize like the custom post type, organize the 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 uh, I don't know, like hooking it up to an email system. Uh, and sending out the emails not only to the people who win it automatically, but also to the people who have who've participated automatically, because there's about three days lost. I don't say lost; that's the wrong word. You know, there's about three days of stuff in there, and I, I reckon all of it could have been automated into about an hour and a half. Um, so there you go. I'm done. I'm going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, do you want to tell us what you were talking about? I don't even remember now. <laughs> <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, we were talking about yeah, you guys. We off, oh, yeah. All right. Well, we were talking a little bit about um, <laughs> how the industry is is, is changing, and and um, uh, David and I were talking about um, uh, how the agencies of today are having a little. Um, well, I guess the major change is is that you don't actually need to get. Um, to hire one agency, you can actually go around an agency model type of um, process and hire individual people and create your own dream team for whatever project that you want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the bigger companies here in the United States are doing that. Um, and I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. I only know what goes on here, but um, that's the way they're seeming to go. And, and the reason is, is because they've got great project managers. If you have a great project manager, then I mean that's ninety percent of the headache because a lot of you know us who have smaller businesses and work with uh, smaller teams, we face most of the stress because we're doing project management on top of the actual um, communication with the uh, client and all the other little pieces. Whereas these larger companies, I mean they've got people there that have years experience and that's all they do is they make sure all of the parts are connecting properly they make sure deadlines are done and um and so they're doing it that way the alternative would be that you hire an agency and you pay an inflated price and and that's their mindset because it's easier for them to get to these this talent now because it's it's i mean they're just a few clicks away and that's not necessarily bad news i'm just saying that um if you're a smaller um, agency, the benefits that you have are obvious. Um, and that's what David and I were talking about. Having built an online business and having to learn all of the things that go along with it, from social media to email marketing and all of the little things, um, our expertise, while it may not be deep in every area, it's wide enough 
where we can sit down with a business owner and put the whole thing out to them in a way that's easy for them to understand, take out the pieces that aren't important because we've already gone through that in our own uh, individual businesses and be a genuine help to them. So I don't see our market in that respect um, as that we're in danger. I'm just saying that like any other type of technology, the longer it's out, the prices of it, what, pilling, what people are willing to pay for it begins to uh, decrease. And so you either reposition the way you're doing it or you find out how to do the same job in a fraction of the time that you used to to preserve that uh, profit uh, margin. And automation is, I mean, if you want to look at WordPress like that, I mean, it automates what used to be done by hand in just a few clicks. It automates what used to be a manual SEO uh, process. Um, so I don't see us really being in bad shape. If I had a top heavy uh, agency that I was running and had a large overhead, I'd be a little concerned right now um, here where I am in the US. Mm -hmm. I'd be looking to reposition how I was um, approaching my type of client. But with what I'm doing now, um, I'm enjoying it. I mean, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's a good time to be doing this type of of business, especially with local clients. Yeah. David, I, I, I missed all of what you had to say. What's your views? What's what's going to change over these next two years? Um, I guess my take on it was that there's been an evolution from build everything from scratch. I'm, I'm looking at a slightly different perspective, I guess, but similar build everything from scratch where you know to page builders and now with gutenberg i i don't think that there'll be there used to be developers who would jump in and say if you're not building your theme from scratch if you're using a page builder you're not a real developer and i just see that that's gone now with gutenberg they can't say that anymore in the wordpress space and that's I think that's point. going to continue. I think that Gutenberg is very disruptive. We see all the companies now that are creating blocks for Gutenberg. And that's very disruptive in the marketplace. It's opened up a lot of opportunities for companies. And I think that's going to continue. I think when we get into the next phase of Gutenberg, which I understand is the customizer, Yep. that at that point, um, themes are going to be doing what plugins are doing now. You know, it'll, there's going to, they're going to have to do things in order to make their theme work in the customizer probably. And I don't know that WordPress will necessarily go to the front end. You know, if you, if they can do it in the customizer, that might be good enough for Matt. <laughs> Maybe Nathan has some insight on that. <laughs> <laughs> why do you why do you say that um i i am um, i think this it's the repeatable block to me that's the the big thing um kind of all of these plugins that we've installed and the you know the headers and the footers and what have you basically a lot of that stuff is just repeatable blocks a lot of the things that we use it for thema in my case, Beaver Thema is the repeatable block. I want things to be on certain pages. Um, and although, to my under, to my knowledge so far, it doesn't have the ability to say, put it on this page, this page, and this page. It does have the ability to put it on that page one at a time. Um, and also the fact that Gutenberg appears to be being taken on board by uh, other CMSs, notably Drupal. I think I think this Gutenberg thing is is whether whether people like it or not going to be the, the the metaphor the modus operandi for building websites all over the place in the near future. And I I would say one thing that I can't get my head around is how how you're going to make it premium, how you're going to sell premium blocks, because I think the barrier will quickly be overcome that that's difficult. Um, and I think there'll be enough free stuff out there. So I, I, I think people who have that as a business model at the minute, it's a shoe in because nobody's doing it and it will be worthwhile to pay. But I think give it, give it a couple of years, that's going to be a really hard business to be in. And I do think it's going to eat, eat, um, page builders, um, 
profit margins a bit. I'm not going to stop using them because Gutenberg doesn't have enough cost. You know, it, it doesn't have that fine grained control. But I do think that it will introduce um, more people to page builders. So maybe maybe their market will grow because people will say, actually, this is all right, but I want a bit more. But I also think there'll be an awful lot of people who stop paying their licenses because it does enough. As an example, on the WP Builds website, I, I could totally get away with Gutenberg uh, for everything that I do, um, apart from certain page layouts. So for example, the archive pages and things, no. But but the posts each each week, every single post I could do in Gutenberg. In fact, mm -hmm. I've I've got this because I do the news on a Monday, and because of the nature of that post and the fact that I'm trying to find various things from all over the internet, I, I use a third party service to to create the post. It's called Story Chief. It was an AppSumo product. It was like 30 quid 50 dollars or something and i write it in that and then i export it to wordpress because it's easier um because of the the options that they've got for like embedding urls with one click of the keyboard and so on but it's basically it's it's what gutenberg is you know you click out of the next section and you get a new paragraph and then you click and you get a new paragraph and then you click and you get a new paragraph and and i in I want all the links to be formatted exactly the right way, and I don't want there to be any errors in the formatting. So I was—I really don't like using the WYSIWYG in WordPress. Um, if I can, if and this just got rid of that problem for me. So although I shouldn't be saying this, I do actually use a, a third-party app, but it, it kind of mimics what Gutenberg is going to do. And for me, it'll just be paragraph, 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 paragraph for that item anyway. There, I've said my piece. Uh -huh. So I say my bit. I mean, I'm mm. really, really excited about the future. I think it feels to me that we've just arrived with page builders. And actually, to me, Gutenberg isn't coming into the equation. It's not disrupting me at the moment mm. because I feel I feel happy with the fact that it's things will remain as they are for some time while Gutenberg catches up, which means that the page builder that I use, which is Beaver Builder, is, is something I can concentrate on. And I love, you know, Thema's been around for a year where we can control different elements. And I, I just think it's opened up new ways of working with clients that were never possible before. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you had to build a unique or dynamic page for WordPress, you had to go and basically write your own PHP template and you would have to mark it up, which meant that your process with clients had to be confined. You had to agree things in the future before you started doing that building because of the time. Yeah. But I think now we could just jump in. We can work directly with clients. I just think it's a really exciting time. I think Gutenberg's doing the things that I'm excited about now, but it's still got to catch up on those. So I'm quite happy to place my trust in the fact that they will keep um, that Gutenberg will run with what I'm using anyway. It's just fine. It's just that I personally don't like the experience of writing in the editor as it stands. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm waiting. I'm not jumping on it either way. So I'm confident that it's not going to disrupt things for me immediately. And I could be in the minority, but I feel with it because it makes me work in a certain way. I feel like I am a, a square peg, peg being banged into a round hole with it, and it's not matching me. So I'm I'm looking out to see what's going to happen with that. Whether other people are going to be exactly the same with that, in which case it's not going to get the adoption, um, and we'll carry on as we are. If it does, then obviously that's my next job is to learn that and adapt to or change to Gutenberg. But I think the way everything's going is just changing. I think Jim's completely right. Mm -hmm. With uh, the um, sorry, go on. Oh, I think Jim's uh, uh -oh. sorry, David. David's frozen Jim's slightly, frozen. literally, like in a really <laughs> interesting, sort of slightly, <laughs> slightly sour looking <laughs> time. Oh, David, you froze oh, for a moment in a really slightly annoyed look. Uh, <laughs> about 10 seconds, you're looking a bit frustrated, uh, <laughs> which is quite funny. I, um, I, I. My understanding was that Gutenberg was in three phases. I found out last night that it's in four. Really? Really? Um, yes. I won't say 
how, but I found out. Um, but I don't know what the fourth one is because it was, the, I, yeah. Anyway, it um, it was four. And I always thought the third, any, and the person that told me that it was four refused to answer my question about what the fourth one was. So, so I can't really go on to go into much more detail. But you know, give it, give it customizer capabilities over the next two years. Those leads have already been appointed. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be ubiquitous. I think everybody will be expecting to operate in some kind of interface like this in the future. Um, I think Thema is the biggest beaver thema is the biggest thing that's happened um since we started the podcast because beaver builder existed and i know that a bunch of things have come out since beaver thema that have emulated it and you know they were i'm not suggesting that they were um stolen as it were but yeah I'm, maybe there was a kernel of that idea but i think i think beaver thema got there first i My, tried one of them oh did you what before yeah. beaver thema no, no. Um, one of its competitors. I, okay. I, I guess we're not allowed to say the name. No. Well, sometimes <laughs> it's sometimes Will it's. Will I best freeze? I yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to boot you out. I've got the got the ban hammer. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, any good? Uh, you know what? The first time I I tried Elementor, um, I wasn't that imp impressed with right. it. B ban him! Ban him! Ban him! He's just said <laughs> <laughs> And and then I tried it again, like a year later. And then I was really impressed with it. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I decided, you know what? I like Beaver Builder, but I have to try their page builder, their, um, the part of them that, that competes with Themer. And so um, I did. And uh, it was very intuitive. It was very easy for me to build a, um, a, a template for my blog posts. So... Um, that's what I'm using it for. I'm using yep. it as this, uh, like you would use it for Themer uh, right now. That's what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I think I'll just stop right there because I don't want to. <laughs> no, it's fine. This is, a <laughs> WordPress, this is a WordPress podcast. It's not a Beaver Builder podcast. I, I know, David, well, yeah. the, the other David, the David above me, this, uh, where is he? That David there, David McCann. McCann. You've been playing with Breezy a bit, I think. Yes. Uh, How are you again, liking it? I, I like it okay. It's yep. it's not quite there yet. The um, making the template for custom archives doesn't seem to be working for mm. me. Um, but you know, this is a trend, which you know, doing it in a totally WYSIWYG way, Beaver Themer pioneered. And then Elementor, Breezy, Oxygen, you know, I'm sure there'll be more that do this. You know, they're going to do it with Gutenberg for sure. Mm -hmm. you know, they'll be able to create templates and, mm -hmm. and things. So, but um, yeah, I like Breezy. It's, it's nice. They just came out with some right click features. Uh, yesterday I got an email um, and I've always, I've always wanted that. Why do I don't we have right click features like we do in Windows or we do on a Mac? Um, they've got a different set of options on the right click as they do on the click than you know the left click. I think that's quite neat. I quite like the idea of that. I um, yeah, that's that's my take. I, I think the biggest thing from this year has been Beaver Thema. Um, I've been utterly delighted with it, and I combine it with a lot of things like um, Power Pack posts module and things like that and the uh, you know and go in and edit the the html output and it's great it's easy the the only thing i would say is tot tot drupal <clears throat> we've been able to do this in drupal for many years with the views module did we put out the episode david i don't know if you follow how many episodes we put out but anybody did i put out the episode about query wrangler yet Yes. Yes. Did you yeah. follow up on that? Did you go check it out? I'd seen it before, and um, yeah, it's great. It is so good. It's. I mean, it's. It's like it's. You know, once you've got a page builder, you're never going back, are you? Really. But um, I love that stuff. You just sort of create a little, you know, a little loop of your own, and and off you go. It's wonderful. Really, really fun. Um, 
he, he's a he's a WordPress guy by night and a Drupal guy by day. Uh, mm. He's pay, he's paid to be Drupal, and at the night he just sort of thought, well, let's see if we can build views in in WordPress in in my spare time because that's what some people do. You know, they've got that capacity to write code even when they're half asleep. Um, and and I love it. Absolutely love it. I confess I haven't really deployed it in Angie yet, but um, I, I think it's a project that if he had more time, I wish somebody would give him a boatload of money um, and say, go on, do make it everything that the, the Drupal version is, but nobody, nobody has yet. Um, so if they came out with Beaver Builder for Drupal, would you you could abandon ship right on on WordPress? No, I don't think I would it? because I, no? yeah, I th no, I think there's. Do, do you know what's really into like the Drupal stuff? Basically, you've got to know, you've got to know the code, and I've forgotten mm. so much. And I jumped when it went from seven to eight, and I think that was a big transition. Their templating engine has moved over to something called Twig, and I would have to learn that. And Symphony as well, um, and I'd have to learn all that. So no, I'm not going anywhere. Um, mm. But I think I was in the right place for me at that time. I think Drupal was was better. Somebody's phone's going. Um, <laughs> is it? It's David. That was mine, but my wife picked it up. <laughs> um, it was it was the right thing for me to use at the time because building building templates in wordpress was equally hard mm. um but now i just think it's ludicrously easy in in mm. wordpress but if gutenberg gets shipped into drupal which it looks like but i mean i don't think it'll come as core i think it'll be a module in drupal but man imagine that imagine a bank of i can't remember what the project's called but there's a there's a url that you can go to where you can see the the cms agnostic bunch of blocks so if you're on Drupal, you can use the exact same set of blocks as you can in WordPress. Um, and presumably, there'll be some back-end wrangling so that when you download it into Drupal, it'll use their, you know, whatever code is needed to make it work in, in Drupal. And is the same thing in WordPress. Is, is there, there a... Build for Drupal? Yes. Here? Yeah, there is. It's the, op it's the free one. There you go. Um, you can jump ship now. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, on that note, <laughs> bye. <laughs> I'm going to stop the podcast. It's going to be called DrupalBuilds.com. Um, the DrupalBuilds podcast. DrupalBuilds.com. Yeah, I'm going to start it tomorrow. No, it, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that ship has sailed, I think. I'm so glad as well because this community is so, so full of different types. The, the Drupal community, I felt, was developers, um, and they were lovely. I never had an interaction which wasn't really great. But what I like about this audience in WordPress is it's everybody. There's people who really know their stuff. Um, and then people who know nothing because they're just beginning yesterday and everybody in between. Whereas I think Drupal, you've got to know a lot before you can even get into those communities because it's so hard to learn. The learning curve's hard. Um, and apparently you know sort of a thousand new people join wordpress every couple of days or something some absurd number um wordpress is like a once in a lifetime um event yeah and how it changed everything and how it brought people together and the nature of the groups um where everybody was very friendly <laughs> it's so odd to see anything like that uh anymore yeah. WordPress yeah. came and just something that i i've never seen uh before yeah it's amazing me and david that you know what was that one <laughs> david there david is that right am i doing that uh yeah, no. that, this one yeah there look david wormsley i feel like i'm on celebrity squares david that'll mean something to you but it won't mean anything <laughs> to, to those two up there um the no we had that Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Back in oh, the seventies, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, <laughs> I, I feel like Beaver Builder was the way that got me into WordPress. Um, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't really a part of it. I just sort of stuck on the outside and didn't mm. really contribute. It's amazing though, because I, I mean, from from saying nothing two years ago to to this is just amazing. I don't quite know how it's happened. You know, there's people that I can... I mean, I went to WordCamp in Manchester the other day, and I just... I kind of... This is going to sound a bit sad. Um, like, people who I genuinely regard to be my friends, and I've never met them. 
and there they were and it was really nice to see them for the first time and i thought that, that's quite a transition isn't it just in life that's a quite a thing you know the the way that the internet has taken over i remember scornfully like 10 years ago thinking people who do dating websites oh, i don't think i'm not so sure about that I'm not sure <laughs> that's a good idea and now I feel in a way that that's what I'm doing, although it's not dating. It's kind of like making friends online and then going to meet them in the real world. And, and oh, it's super cool. Super cool. Hey, can I ask something about just, uh, we're talking about all the new technology. Do you, any of you feel that there's anything that you really need that you don't already have? Because I'm starting to get to the thought that I'm not using the tools I've got enough as it is. I think there's some fabulous ways of being able to globally change the look of your sites if you mark up some uh, templates in the right way with some uh, CSS and use some of these tools to change global settings. I'm not doing it. I'm looking too much at the technology and not using what I've got. So do you think with all the technology we've got that that might just be a slight distraction and that we should focus on making sites quicker? Hmm. I'm going to let somebody else do that. I'm going to open a beer. Absolutely. <laughs> I think the answer is absolutely no. What are you talking about? <laughs> D uh, David, do you want to do that? Do you want to jump in? <laughs> I was hoping you would. But, um, <laughs> I guess <laughs> if you're talking about pain points, you know, I say email marketing, setting up, you know, your email marketing is still kind of a pain point and it can be costly and the steps you go through you know to set up your mailing list and and all that what are your pain points i don't really have any pain points i i just buy like five of the same thing and test them all and throw out three of them and, and use that one until somebody says, hey, you need to check out this one over here. Um, but I mean, honestly, you can't really learn anything in a deep way uh, when you're bouncing from thing to thing to thing. And uh, it's, it's time consuming, it wastes a lot of time. Mm. Um, but that said, once you get in the habit of doing it, sometimes you're buying without even thinking of it. You know, mm. you buy something because it's on a uh, lifetime deal. And in your mind, you know, you probably won't even need to technically not even need to touch it for another three or four months or so. And, uh, but you're just getting it cause it's a lifetime deal. And then somewhere in between buying it in that three or four months, you forgot to even have it. And so AppSumo is great for that. Um, oh. I bought a whole bunch of stuff I, and you know, I don't regret it cause I kind of look at it as like, I put in the T and E um, travel and entertainment uh, category, <laughs> this kind of purchases. <laughs> Uh, cause I find it entertaining. I like to, you know, somebody <laughs> might go outside and look at buying a new plant for the, put in the window and I buy another plugin and, and uh, take it to cases. But <laughs> that's great. I mean, honestly, the, the pain points, um, you know, as far as WordPress goes, I mean, things like Themer are taking those and putting those into the background, like, uh, custom headers and really getting what you want. Uh, to look like you want it to look in the in the header. That's kind of like the last frontier of the web page, isn't it? Um, but on the other side, you know, shopping carts and things like that. Um, I'm not like a big fan of WooCommerce. Um, so if I if I need to suggest for somebody to go over to a SaaS solution and just plug their products in there for now, there's plenty of those out there. Mm. And um, and so WordPress creates things that beside WordPress itself never really seemed to become the plugin of choice for a lot of people like um, Jetpack. Jetpack's been around for I don't know how long, but you know, people like rushing to, oh, we gotta get Jetpack, get, you know. Uh, what do you call it, a kismet, um, the spam. Again, that's another one where people aren't, oh, you got it, this is the one to use if you wanna, you know, be really. A and so you could just go down the line. You know, I, I think kind of Gutenberg might fall into that category uh, at this point where, Oh, well, you know, we're just going to work around Gutenberg. As long as Gutenberg doesn't get in the way, that's what we're really concerned about. But, um, you know, I don't remember what the question was. I just kind of <laughs> got pain into train of, but, yeah. So wait, wait. Uh, there's really not too many pain points, but you know what? Um, 
this is boring work sometimes. The exciting thing is getting the project done or sitting down in the beginning and talking about it. Everything in between is boring. That's why we got places like AppSumo where we can buy these toys and you know take them for a test run. I'm totally the opposite. I um I I what I need to do, like imagine this is New Year's resolution territory. What I really need to do is only buy things that I have a need for. A uh, good example would be a couple of years ago, I don't know, 18 months ago, I needed Facet WP. And it could have been Search and Filter Pro, but I ended up using Facet WP. And I I needed it. So I bought it and I used it. And I got quite good at it because I needed it. But I, I'm exactly like you, Jim. I buy a heap, a heap of stuff that I don't really need. Um, and I need to stop doing that. So it's like a New Year's resolution. But I, yeah. for me, the, the bit that you find boring, I love. I, I don't really I, – I love sitting down with the computer and wrangling um, the code and putting all that stuff together. I absolutely love it. If somebody could take my, um, the, my interaction with clients away, I would, I would quite happily sit in a darkened room with a computer hmm. and try that for a year. Um, I just love that bit. I really do love the sitting with the computer and coding. And I, and this, you know, this, this podcast, I don't know why that's got me, but I do, I do love it. Um, that sort of interaction, but it's, it's kind of not, not with the clients. It's just me talking into a microphone or talking to one other person, but it kind of speaks to that kind of nerd in me. Cause we, we end up on some level talking sort of technical details and things, but yeah. I, I Oh, I stop buying stuff I don't need and then playing with it and wasting a load of time. Um, so please, please, <laughs> Upsumo, stop marketing cleverly at me. I should just unsubscribe from their emails. Why don't I do that? I'm glad uh, they're adding more uh, WordPress plugins. Yes, they're doing it very deliberately. Yeah, yeah. it's not a, it's not an accident. They've, they're out to get them. Yeah. David, but you find you a lot of re repeating, though, lately. They're all repeating themselves. I mean, there's just thing. another SEO yeah. plugin, and, you yeah. know? Is there anything which you guys have, have sort of stumbled across in the last period of time, let's say six months or something, where you've thought, that's cool. Nobody knows about this one. For me, it would be that query wrangler. I think that's cool. Hmm. Um, but is, have you got a little tool or product? It doesn't have to be WordPress. It could be any kind of random thing. Mm. Nothing I have. Everything I need and I'm not using it properly. Mm. Mm. That's good. Stay there, hmm. I'd say. Stay exactly there. If you've got nothing that you – like that thing about Facet WP, that taught me that I would never have um, – I would never have bought that, which was a mistake. It's now in my arsenal. I got to use it. Um, but – I, I don't think I would have sort of gone out and bought it. It wasn't like a tempting thing. And I need to do more of that, you know, kind of hunker down on the stuff which I, which I actually need. By the way, um, just to get this back to where we kind of wanted to be at the very, very beginning, if you have come here to find out if you've won a prize, I hope you have. Um, the link, oh, it's got lost in all the comments. God, there's loads of comments, and I haven't responded to any of them. Hello. Um is here. If you go to that, you'll find out on a spreadsheet whether you've won anything or not. I hope you have. Um, but you're going to have to wait. Miguel says, yes. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Kyle, you cleaned up, man. You totally <laughs> cleaned up. You, how many did you win? Uh, I'm going to look at this. Oh, I haven't got the spreadsheet live anymore. Kyle, you won about um, 14,000 things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, check. Oh, you got two, did you? Oh, it's not you I'm thinking of. Then somebody else won those. Maybe it was Bernard. Bernard Grenot, I think, won quite a lot. Um, do you think I should do this competition again? What do you three think? Uh, <laughs> it distressed you out, Nathan, no end. So I'd say, oh. uh, smaller, yeah. Well, once a year, if you're going to do it again, um, yeah. but you can make it a little smaller. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've got to rein in my expectation. I honestly thought that from that email, a couple of people had reply and it got a bit out of hand and I kept saying, Oh yes, let's add you in. Um, okay. That's good to know. Um, thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, David, it was a shambolic start. Uh, really bad. I'm very, very sorry to everybody who got bumped and moved around and whatnot. Um, we got there in the end. Do you have anything you want to say before we, we call this fun want, little episode a day? I want you to call it to an end because I don't drink normally when we do this. I'm desperate for the loo. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, go on. You go to the Wait toilet. We'll look. No, no, no. Go on. It'd be really funny. We'll talk to the empty chair. <laughs> <laughs> we should do this. We should do this more often. Um, it says it says John Jonathan Jonathan Owen. I'm sh maybe Jonathan is meant meant to write Jonathan. Um, but yeah, maybe we should do this more often. But then we'd be treading on Kyle's toes, and he's got very large and capable toes that I don't want to tread on. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, maybe jo, 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 John, John Bow, John Bow says Jonathan, right? Okay, shall we call it a day? Shall we knock it on the head and say this was a, a mixture of success and utter failure? <laughs> it, it was fun, the whole, the whole thing was fun, yeah. Anyway, I, I saw just as I got cut off and left you, you, David, and Jim. Just saying, I think David's gone. We'll just carry on with it. And I thought, wow, these guys are brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, David? I can see that if we line up guests for them, they could interview them for us. Um, like <laughs> proxy interviewers. We could just attend, and then every time we could just hang up on Skype. And uh, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. The Skype connection blew out again. Oh, and uh, you've had to carry out the interviews for us, but don't worry. You know we'll be there for you next time. No, we're we're not we're not that hopeless. Um, right, go and David needs to go and use the facilities. I need to go. I'm going to tell you something. I put this in the calendar about a month ago, and uh, this is how much I love you. It's my son's birthday party now. Oh, you got to go. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened. He's shooting people with laser guns um, <laughs> about eight miles away. So whenever this finishes, I'm going to go and join him and whoop his butt um, with laser guns. So, uh, yeah, if it's all right with you, I'm going to knock Sounds it Sounds good. There. I have a client waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. David McCann, Jim... Galliano, Dave, <laughs> David Wormsley, David Wormsley, <laughs> DavidWormsley.com, and me, Nathan Wrigley. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, one last thing. Check out next week's podcast. I'm I'm quite pleased. I'm not saying anything else. I think it's going to be a good one. Is it a good one, David? Yes. You think so? You've heard it. The guest is um, a bit shaky. Yeah, shaky guess, dodgy. I don't know. I don't even know what he's got to do with WordPress, frankly, but we'll, you know, give it a listen. Bit of a fraud, if you ask me. <laughs> Didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> see you later. I'm going to press the stop button. Oh, right. no, I've just turned my Mac screen off. Are you still there? Oh, hang on. We're still in. here. I've got to type in my password. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust me uh, with anything. Right, I'm going to stop recording, and that's done.